in my life. I have someone who needs me. Jesus Christ, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> Council Pop. So we're talking about the Joker, Folly Adieu. It's a little episode of Council Pop for the for the fans at home. Not every day you get a little Council Pop action. So, uh, but no. this one we had to. We had to. Um, it's all it's to. all the buzz. It's got the internet alive, yeah. aflamed. Yeah. We, just, I am fascinated. I'm fascinated by all of it. Yeah. I'm just enjoying the. The turmoil. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get right into it. It is an episode of Council Pop, so there's 60 seconds on the clock. Uh, oh, no. I'm excited to hear what you think. I don't even want to spoil it. I'm just curious. So, 60 <laughs> seconds on the clock. I think... <laughs> I, I really I really wanted to love this movie as it went. I, I, there's so much context you need for my 60 seconds. Uh, I, was, I was in a very small... I was in the, the minority. I did not like the first Joker film. We did not do an episode on it, but you and I had several long, intense conversations about the first Joker film. Keith, if I recall correctly, liked it. I did not. I did not like him as a character. I thought the film did not work, and I know that made me an outlier for, for that hugely influential film of 2019. So this film... I went into, I did not want to see it. I was mad. I don't want to see it. Uh, <laughs> the, the, this Monique's is not yelling, how this 60 seconds the door. works. Okay, see, 20 seconds on the clock. I don't think it's a good movie, but I love what it tried to do. I, I, I love what it tried to do. But the problem is it did it bad and it's boring. But it, I, there's so much to talk about. No, no, I know. I am shit. <laughs> I, even when we don't, uh, do this uh, as often as we both like. <laughs> I, I hate that we align on things because I, I, I feel like now hearing you talk, we may have very similar viewpoints. It, it either means that my taste is getting worse or your taste is getting better. And either way, the former. I don't, I don't love it. The former. It's <laughs> <laughs> definitely you are. I bring, <laughs> I bring you down. Yes. Um, Six seconds on the clock. Should I? So thank you. Um, <laughs> it's so funny that you start your six seconds talk. When I was a young boy, <laughs> I like you, now you're starting it with you've been, it, the, the clock is running. <laughs> no, my clock hasn't started yet. It's here we go. It's, it's, you're 20 seconds six, in. <laughs> it's, uh, 60 seconds. Here we go. Um, uh, th this this movie tried to do uh, so much, and much like Everett, I applaud it for the attempt. It just tried to do too much and, and failed. It spread itself too thin, unfortunately. But I, I, I want more movies. I want directors to feel confident and safe enough to take as big a swing as this film did. And it, in a wasteland of, of mediocrity that is cinema today, you know, I, I'm, the bar is so low that I'll applaud an attempt. It's like, great. Great, this is a different interpretation. Great, we we tr we tried something new. Yeah, I didn't love it. There's some there's some holes, but but boy, I think is this fun to talk about? I think it's fun to have this conversation uh, because of how much care and and intent went into the story. Love it or hate it, Todd Phillips tried his absolute best, and at least that's what I got. I don't know him. I didn't talk to him, but I appreciate feeling leaving the theater feeling like, hey, he tried. And boy, is there something to talk about. There's people that love it. There's people that hate it. I want to get into it. So I'm just excited. I'm excited about the energy around the film. So great. Let's talk about it. Are there people that are loving it? <laughs> no. Just. <laughs> I got the sneaking suspicion that we're not giving the people what they want. I'm going to start here because I'm, I'm already talking. Yeah. <laughs> I, the more that I've saw it yesterday, it's been 24 hours now. And it has grown on me since then. Not to a point where I'm willing to commit to being like, I actually really liked it. But the, it, the film has layers. Yeah. <laughs> the film has layers. And, and I bet if you watched it again, you'd get a little something different. And you watch it a third time, you get a little bit more. And you might start to piece some things together. And I, that's not a fun way to watch a film, but that's kind of the direction I'm leaning towards now. If you let the dust settle a bit, 
There might be some more to this movie if, if we keep coming back to it a bit. Well, maybe, maybe you don't know who I really was. Let's uh, start just ever so briefly by thanking you for being here. You, personally, oh, and only you, everyone else, we hate. Uh, but <laughs> except for people on Patreon, we love you guys. Fish, Rousher, Derek Brook. Uh, no, Keats an idiot. His name might, I haven't logged in in a while. I'm sorry, I'm behind. <laughs> but we love you guys. We thank you. We think they're all still paying members, which is very generous because we've been, we've been behind our, on our hustle here. But let's start as it pertains to the Joker, Keith, with the original Joker. We don't have, this is not a review of that film. It's not a discussion about that film, but obviously these two films are linked and you can't really talk about this one without really talking about that, that first one. I, I think a point that you made in your 60 slash 120 seconds uh, is <laughs> that, 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 I, that I really, like, was my number one takeaway from watching this film, The Folly Adieu, is, like, the fucking balls that Todd Phillips has to have. Love it or hate it. Love it yeah. or hate it. What, and, and if you love the first film, you probably hate what he did here. Uh, that's yeah. just a fact. And I, I really disliked the first film, so I kind of love what he did here. He just didn't do it well. But what he <laughs> did, the balls it takes to be like, to go from this long time, great comedic director, he's made two or three of the better comedies of the last 25 years. Um, and that's your thing. That's your lane. And then you come out of nowhere to direct this like really dark adult uh, you know, adaptation of this comic book superhero, one of the most famous, or sorry, villain, one of the most famous villains of all time, and you re achieve, you you receive all this acclaim, and your and, and your career is totally changed. You're almost like an artiste. You're a film auteur now. You're you go from hang, Hangover Two to be, being nominated for Best Picture, and 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 all this all this praise, uh, and then you're just like, eh, fuck you guys. Like that, like that's because that's what this film does. This film now, says, this film says. Go ahead, but we're gonna argue about this. The but go film, ahead. The, this film says explicitly, overtly, if you liked the first movie and you thought that he was cool, like you thought this was someone you should like and root for, fuck you. I'm gonna dismantle all of that. And the fact that you that he's willing to do that and and incur the wrath because I am sure he is getting a lot of wrath from angry, yes. angry people on the internet yes. um, who, like, feel betrayed that their fucking lame-ass idol from that first one, which I hated, we'll talk about it. I had, That was my biggest problem, was how fucking lame he was. And now Todd Phillips is just like, yeah, you're right. He is, he is weak. He is pathetic. He is a terrible uh, protagonist. He's not even the main character here, you idiots. Like, that's an incredible flex. It's an incredible flex. I, <laughs> I, the, uh, <laughs> I don't, the, I don't even know. I can't talk because <laughs> there's, <laughs> it's so hard. I, man, uh, I don't think it's that. I get, here's what I get. <laughs> the film is clearly trying to, to, to quiet those voices. I, I think the biggest example of this that says really sticks out of my uh, my head is them keep referencing the like shitty home not home movie the shitty uh, uh, made for TV movie and like how bad that was. Yeah. I felt like that's directly saying like the original's not as good as you guys think. Yeah, yeah. Like calm down. Like put it put let's put it in its context. But I didn't think it was like I don't think the whole like point of it was to be like fuck you this character is the worst. I really really see a natural progression of this story. I don't, I think, I think a lot of people are thrown off by the musical aspect of it too. I think that's a, and maybe we could talk about it. Uh, like the songs, I think the musical aspect is, as a genre is also a different thing here. But the, the song, the singing element of, I think threw people off. But I, I, I really think this is a, a nice natural progression. And I feel like all of my thoughts as I continue to watch the movie, were cemented by the end of the film, which, spoiler alert, I loved. I loved the end of the film, and we could talk about why I think it was People turn it off, great. they hate you, they hate you. No, I know, I, 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 give me a chance to at least explain. Please turn me off, but give me <laughs> This is the give internet, me a little... we're, not, we're not giving chances for explanations and nuance, <laughs> Keith. Nobody gets chances on the internet, you piece <laughs> you of pussy. shit. You <laughs> <laughs> I really, the conclusion of this character's story, the the art, I almost look at these two films as like this film felt a little, a little bloated that it almost should have been just like one three hour movie 
mm. versus versus two four hour in total runtime movies or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think it's that. I don't. I don't think it's going in the direction. I think Todd Phillips believed in the story he was telling, and he fucking committed to it. That's the one. That's my biggest takeaway from the film. I probably should have put it in the in the for sixty seconds. Is there is a level of commitment to this film that impresses me, whether I liked what actually happened or not. I applaud the commitment that Todd Phillips says. No, I'm going to give you this art. I'm going to give it to you. And, and, and I'm not wavering on that. I'm going to buy yeah. all the way the fuck in and just, and, and let's see where it goes. And it's not working out for him that well right now, but <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I just disagree in the sense that I, I believe that this film and the, the direction of the film, the, the way it goes, the, the story as, as, <laughs> as much as you can say there is a story, uh, I think the, the execution of this film is in direct response to the, reactions to that first film. I think it is, this is Todd Phillips addressing you directly as, as a viewer. I think uh, I'm fascinated, which we can talk about too. But do you think that that's like the point? Like, do you, or do you think that is one of a few things that are trying to be accomplished here? Or do you think the goal, like he set out to be like, okay, people took this way out of context. They put this guy on a pedestal. I can't have this on my conscience. I need to set the record straight. This guy is not the the superhero that we're, that you're all sort of flocking and believing yeah. he is. So let's, do you think that was goal number one from him? Uh, as you, we could probably get online and Google, <laughs> he's, he's probably given interviews, which we haven't watched. So it's just two guys speculating. But I would say, based on just my interpretation of the art yeah, of the film. This is just our interpretation. Yes. But, then yes, yes. I think first and foremost, oh, because no. from start to finish, this film is in direct opposition to everything that the first film was, where the first one felt like, and this was, we can talk about some of the things I didn't like about the first film, is I didn't like him as a protagonist because I thought he was weak and everything kind of happened to him by accident. And the fact that he was so obviously severely mentally ill took away a lot of his agency. And uh, I didn't like it then as, a, as an aside to that, uh, as, as, a, as a Batman text, as a, in that world of the Joker, because the Joker to me, and a great villain in general, needs to have intent, and, you, and even if it is a little uncertain, is this guy crazy, or is it very calculated, or is it some crazy, scary mix of both, and wouldn't that be the most frightening thing? Which, to me, the first one didn't have. He was just like a hyper-victim who, like, felt like the world owed him something because everyone was so mean to him, and he's gonna lash out. And so I didn't like that for a lot of reasons. And I think that's what a lot of folks uh, resonated with. It obviously became like this calling card for a, a lot of folks that liked it who don't belong to this. But there is like that sect of society that's sort of like, I'm oh, going to use buzzwords here, but like that incel, like, oh, oh. chicks, ch women don't love me, so it's their fault. Like that kind of vibe. Like I get picked on every day, so like... I'm going to, the You're world, justified. I, yeah, I'm going to get revenge on the world and it'll be such a great yeah. time. And that's why a lot of people really like that movie. This movie really doesn't have any of that. There's really no like cool action. I would say that the Joker as a character, Arthur Fleck is never really cool in this. He is, it's like, I saw this character in the first one and I was like, this guy sucks. He has all of these bad qualities. And now Todd Phillips in the sequel was like, you were right, Ev. Look at, look at two and a half hours of this guy sucking and being like totally like a, a shitty hero. And then he's also a phony. He's also telling you it was all bullshit. And then he's going to die at the hands of somebody who was the real Joker, perhaps, which we can talk about. But like, I, I think that, and the fact that this is a musical, and the fact that it's also a courtroom drama, and the fact that there's no cool action at all, like, it, he's, it, but, this, this is double birds. This is double birds to everybody. But I don't think there was cool action in the first one. I don't think he was ever that cool People in loved him. One. He's dancing on the stairs. He's being funny on the, he's the, dancing the, out to yes. Murray Franklin's show. He's cool. He yes. shoots him in the head. Oh, so cool. <laughs> there. <w> <laughs> I mean, uh, he's less here. Yes, that's. I agree that I think the film tries to set the record straight a little bit, but I don't think it's priority number one. He, but he does have some cool moments. The the coolest moment is when he like 
goes off in his fantasy land where he murders everyone in the, in the courtroom. There were a couple moments in his fantasy world where he's dancing with Lady Gaga, looks great. Yeah, but I think fashionable that, suit on, you know, but that's not hair. what. But that musical shit and courtroom drama shit is not what the fucking Joker fans want. Like that's not cool to them. Yeah, like, but he this, might look this cool. is what I think. Here, uh, this I think you touched on a great thing. Do you? I'll ask you, Everett, and but you at home. I would assume uh, I know the answer from majority of you at home. So I'll ask Everett. Uh, how much do you care about the source material? How, how much does that actually matter to you to enjoy not just this film, any adaptation of, a, uh, of let's stay in the comic book world? Does, that, does it matter to you? And how much? The short answer, I would say, yes, it matters. Uh, the longer answer is that like it depends on if I have a personal relationship with said original media, you know what I mean? I'm gonna want it to be really loyal to it if I really cared about it as a kid, whereas uh, stuff I cared less about, whatever. I think if you're going to make a film and it's going to draw from source material like this, it needs to draw from source material like this and, and work in that world. Otherwise, it as a general statement, I think it would feel very cheap to me that you're just sort of like attaching this thing to it. I'm trying to think of the example because this just happened somewhere where it's like, it has nothing to do with that world. Would you hate that world? But you just want the IP recognition. So you're yeah. like bringing that on. Like I appreciated about even the first Joker, which I didn't like, that it existed within this world, but was a very different uh, take from what we've had before. Like I, I like that sort of thing. And that's my, that's my point. I, I think most, if you hated this film and feel betrayed and wronged, it's because of your expectations coming into the film, not the film itself. It doesn't mean the film is bad. But the inherently. film is bad. <laughs> it can be bad, yes. But I think the reason people hate it so much and feel so betrayed and so visceral is because it didn't meet their expectations like at all. Yes. Uh, obviously. But I think in this specific case with jo Joker, we've seen, we've seen the best version of this. I think universally we can agree we've seen the best version of the Joker. I, I, like the, the Michael Jordan of Jokers has, has come and gone. So to me, let's explore the cat, like let's have fun with it. I'm, not, I'm no longer precious about it because it already existed. We had it, it was great. We all, we all recognize it. we're talking it. about Jared Leto, Oscar obviously. For it. I can't wait to show you my toys. <laughs> obviously, Leto, <laughs> King Joker, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But you know what I'm saying, like he, he, he like it, it, all, it all happened. We had it, it was amazing, awesome. That doesn't mean like we can't have Joker again, we can't have a new adaptation, we can't. That's part of what I liked about the first one. It wasn't the traditional Joker, it was a different sort of yeah. uh, a, a, approach in a Scorsese style, like that's super unique and fun and interesting. I, I love that. So yeah. I, don't, I don't like that people get so bent out of shape that like, oh, it was okay to do it like Scorsese, but it's not okay to do it like Chicago? Yeah, no, why? but it's not. Why, just because you don't fucking want it? Yeah, I don't think that's why those people don't like this. Like, because I, I don't think it's like, oh, this is a Joker interpretation I don't like. It's because that first one got them so like bloodthirsty and they felt so like justified in their like fucking basement rage that like they <laughs> wanted this film to pat them on the back again and be like yeah look mm. your 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 hero is out there taking revenge on people again and this time he turned it on its head and was like no actually this is pathetic this guy's pathetic he's not he might not even be the main character nobody likes him like he's he's a frail guy got assaulted by the guards like he's the bottom of somebody's shoe so like i think that's why people are mad they could they could have it could have been a musical and it could have been a courtroom drama as long as he still was like killing people and getting the upper hand and all of those people would have loved it like mm. like i i would that's put forth to you maybe fair maybe fair maybe i guess yeah maybe you're Tell us in the comments. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, as we, one last thing in, in praise of Todd Phillips, we talk about <laughs> the balls. Uh, I just love that he was, he was willing to try this. Um, and, and all the more, again, I, I don't think it's a good movie, but like to try this in any genre, in any world is incredible. In an independent film would be fascinating. But to do it in one of, with the most recognizable villain maybe in, in all of comic books, for a huge studio, for a, as a sequel to an insanely successful 
IP and to just be like, I'm going to tear all that down because I'm going to subvert everything. Was, again, whether you yeah. loved it or hated it, like he really changed it and really did not give you what you wanted. And I know that that's frustrating. And I wish he had done that in a way that was also really good. But like, it's still awesome that he did that because the yeah. same people who are out there every time a new Star Wars or Marvel or what have you comes out and goes, ah, it's just all the same. It's all the same. It's all the, yeah. this is very different. And that doesn't mean you have to love it, but I, I, I never respect, I never understand just like piling on people who tried something in a position of power. Cause that's all people like you and I ever beg for. It's just like, would yeah. someone with the power to be in one of these rooms, try something new. Is and it try something that. different. Yeah. So that's why I'll never, I'm here to defend Todd Phillips. Not necessarily the movie. Uh, like, I just, I love, did you know, I heard this today, did you know they didn't even do uh, test screenings? No. Film didn't do test screenings. That's how much confidence Warner Brothers had in this film. Last film makes a billion dollars. They gave him the keys. Yeah. And they said, go. And how many times have I sat up here and Warner Brothers specifically bash them and say, you guys just really meddled and you can feel their presence shifting to make bad decisions, financial decisions that ruin the sake of creativity in the movies itself. They didn't do that here. So I need to applaud that. Thank yeah. you for giving him this opportunity and thank you to him for sticking, sticking to his guns and trying something creative and doing something in a sea, again, of mediocrity, of just the same old superhero things. Again, the movie, the movie sucks fine. Yeah. That's not what I'm here to defend. I'm yeah, here yeah. to defend the integrity of the creative. Great, great stuff. Yeah. It's really, it's really awesome that we got this piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Because yes. the thing is, do you want to talk about good things or you want to talk about why we keep saying it's, it's kind of crappy? I don't know. You, whatever you want to do. I got both. I got... Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I'd say the good things are, let's be a little positivity first. I think the good things okay. are like kind of obvious uh, to anyone with <laughs> eyes. I, I, I think okay. uh, obviously the cinematography is pretty pretty amazing. Well, only once or twice was I like, okay, I know I understand. There's a light in the background, Chloe Zhao. Like I know there's the sun. It's gonna be in the background. I know. Oh, in the prison, there's a light. We're getting that flare. I, I I'm being nitpicky. It's a beautifully looking film. The the colors, it the is. fire, the smoke, the water, the blues. The it is beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. I was going to say it myself, the cinematography, the, the cinematography is excellent. I think the directing is really sharp as well. Uh, and then I also, to, the other thing, uh, the, the performances. I think both performances from the lead are really, really good to great. Like I, I buy in totally on both their performances. Solid craft film, top to, I don't want to say top to bottom, but pretty solid on at least those three key areas. Yeah, I thought both, I thought the performances are excellent too. Joaquin Phoenix is obviously a great actor. I liked his performance better in this one than the first one. I thought there was, in a lot of scenes, a lot more subtlety to like his, like him being sad, where he just, he just would, it would flash. It would just be a little flash of his face where you could tell something's really hurting him or, you know, inversely kind of tickling him a little bit. Like I, I, I really thought he was pretty phenomenal. Lady Gaga, I think, also did really well. I think uh, yeah. this is a Gaga household, so I, I'm not, I, if I thought she was <laughs> terrible, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be allowed to say it anyways. <laughs> but I do think she does really good. I mean, this is, what, like her third yeah. role or her third major role, and she seems really committed to these parts. She does a lot of nice, subtle stuff too. I think, I, yeah. I think she's clearly a very talented actor. She's not like other pop stars who have, who have entered the arena of film in the past. Uh, Madonna, who I love, <laughs> but like, who don't necessarily just have like natural chops. And she, she yeah. seems to really understand the assignment in, in, in this. So, and I, pretty, pretty good singer. <laughs> <laughs> She's a phenomenal singer. I've heard some commentary about like her, not just her character, but like her voice was, was underutilized or she sort of held back a little bit in terms of like the quality of her. Cause there's no question. She, this woman can sing. Yeah. Um, and, and I think she, people felt like they didn't unleash her musically. Well, yeah, as, but as I think that was part of a choice was like, because the character wouldn't be a great singer, which is like, you can talk about how, you know, how much, how, how real true to life we need to get there. But yeah, if it's all imagination anyways, 
Um, yes. So yeah, cinematography and performances. I think this movie would be nominated for best cinematography at the Oscars if it wasn't getting so much. <laughs> like it'll be buried now, but I, I think it was that good. I really think it was really yeah. Really I was curious about that. Done. I was like, I wonder if this negative, all this negativity, will hamper its awards that you know because i could see in a world i haven't seen a lot of the awards favorites yet this year but like in 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 most years you could see either of those leads getting a nomination in some place yeah. you could see uh music related awards or sound editing or cinematography um and sound editing i thought especially i thought i'd, I'd be surprised if it's not there because i really like the way it, it did some of that musical stuff I would assume it gets shut out. <laughs> yeah, 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 just, just like just forgotten, ignored. Forgotten about it. This yeah. movie didn't happen. I bet you it'll sneak in there for one or two. Um, but that's kind of the end of the praise to me. It's like those things are really good. So it's not just like, eh, just a couple yeah. things. Um, the, the praise yeah. is cinematography performances, the sound, and, you know, and whatever, but also just like the, the swing. There's a huge swing. Yeah, and the and, commitment. And that's the best part the of The commitment, it. yeah. So that, which I think yeah. is unpopular, because I am sure that like the vast majority of people who hate this movie hate it for the reason that we really like it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah. like we like yes. that shit at the end and the way it, it unfolded. Uh, whereas like most people be like, oh, the fuck, that's terrible. Um, what did you hate about? I mean, what's what's the bad stuff? What's what comes to mind first? First order. Uh, two things. The two things that really jump out to me were. Being so beholden to the musical genre, not just from a music standpoint, but from, like, it, it felt very much from the stuff that I looked at or uh, read, uh, videos, I don't read much, uh, but uh, <laughs> read. <laughs> it was, like, very true to, like, Chicago mm -hmm. and being in that courtroom for, for so long uh, and, and trying to, like, follow the cues of what a m traditional musical would kind of do that structure. I think that was a hindrance to it. I, I, I think, <laughs> I mean, I, may, I just sound like uh, the person who just wants, I just should, he should have killed more people. But I think getting a taste of, even if it's in his mind, even if it doesn't, you know, like just getting a sense of him and, and Harley sort of living out a little bit of that dream uh, I think that just movie was too bogged down in just staying in the courtroom and not sort of branching out further than with this very small like prison cell and courtroom and prison cell and courtroom. Give me one scene where where they where they branch out, they go on a joyride, they live life for a moment, eat, let it be fleeting. Well, that would that'd be like that. that rooftop musical scene. Yeah. Yeah, but that's, um, uh, I'm referring to like murdering and living <laughs> that like famous, that f she wants that fame. Like that's what she's after, right? Yeah, but I, I think that's, that's what's part of the point is that, to back to my original point, is that none of this is cool or successful. Like this is not, he's not that guy. You know what I mean? Like he's just even, even if he's imagining no, 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 he's it, it's almost guy. still too cool at this point. Like. I, uh, I just, I know, I feel like I, well, uh, maybe I'm not... Um... No, you are. I mean, I think what you're saying is the film is fucking boring. <laughs> and that's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's just too, it's too slow. And I think it would have helped pay off the end a little bit more. But we could talk, I'd love to talk about the end. I, I think that, and there was a lot of repeti repetitive nature within the songs. Like when, when the Saints Come Marching In was like sung like four times. <laughs> Five times they sang a lot of the same songs over and over again. Yeah, that, that was a little bit repetitive. It was just a little too uh, slow moving, slow paced. Yeah, it was There's not a whole it lot was, of movie here. It was boring. There's zero story, and because there's zero story, I mean the story is he's in jail and now he's going to trial. Like that, that's that's it, and it, nothing happens outside of that. And and the trial stuff itself is not written in a way that it's like compelling. You know what I mean? Like, it, yeah. it, it's just sort of, like, exhausting because of the combination of the fact that it's not super interesting and also because he's an unreliable narrator. The whole time I'm wondering, like, how much of this is real? And then so that distracts me from being in the moment of the film, which then makes those scenes feel really long, where it's just, like, they're just kind of, like, recapping what happened in the first one. And every once in a while, there's sort of, like, a, 
ha ha, that was kind of a funny moment or observation <laughs> or calling the judge your majesty. Like these little things that are kind of like funny, but like not enough to get you through all of that. And then it's like, oh yeah, back at the prison and now he's gonna sing into the payphone. And most of the songs are really slow and simple. And then nah, nah, back in court and now they're singing slow. And it's just, it that last act, I started to be like, this feels like it's five hours long. Um, <laughs> like it really, I, I was getting really like agitated by it. I think that again, that Todd Phillips wanted to be a little subversive uh, and, and, and turn what people liked about that first one completely around. But just doing, just having Joker come out and say, I'm not really that guy. Like it's, it's, it's all an act. I, I, I'm responsible for my own decisions. I deserve to, to be punished and then get killed would have been enough. Like he didn't also need to try to like subvert things by making it a musical or subvert things by being this yeah. like really slow courtroom drama. And I wish he hadn't. Or if it was gonna be that, like, I wish the courtroom stuff was sharper and quicker. And like, yeah. like again, I, I talk a lot of shit on Aaron Sorkin just to piss you off. But with, like, <laughs> give me, give me a little bit of that give kind me some of Sorkin. energy. Yeah. Where it's like, oh, yeah. now we're, now this is this is cutting a little bit, and it, it never it never has that. Another big issue that I have is I felt like I had to do. I felt the weight of the what the film was trying to do. All the things it was trying to balance, like, fell on me. I remember thinking, like, I'm paying attention to, like, the lighting cues that are happening. I'm paying attention to the, the little things over here. Like, oh, oh, that, what does that look mean? Or, like, what's in his head? What's not in his head? I, I'm, this film is trying to, to be a courtroom drama. It's, it's, it's trying to subvert the expectations. It's, it, it's doing all, it's being a musical. It's so true to that era of, of Hollywood, it's uh, uh, the films that were made at that time, like all of these things it's juggling. And I, I felt the burden of it midway through. I was like, God, I'm kind of tired yeah. from like yeah. thinking of all these things and keeping the perspectives that I need to like make this film make sense. All the things that I'm sure Todd Phillips spent three years laboring over. Like I, I only have an hour, you know, two hours to do that. Yeah, yeah. You've had years to craft this story. Yeah. It felt too much. Uh, and that's, I think, what help, hurts the pacing as well. Like, I think I just needed a little bit of a break to have some fun for a moment. <laughs> yeah, give me a there's minute. really no fun to be had, which I also yeah. wonder, like, is that intentional too? Like, this shouldn't be fun. This guy, you know, this guy's a yeah. fucking psychopath. Like, he's a violent, yes. murdering psychopath. Like, don't, it's not fun, guys. It's not, he's not, yeah. you're not going to get that release you want of him running off with the sexy Harley Quinn girl and doing, you know, fucking huge musical numbers while they Sweeney Todd cut people's heads off. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, we're not going to give yeah. you that. We're going to yeah. keep making you think I don't think, think it needed coming. to, to, to clarify, for my point, I don't think it needed to be as extreme, although that sounds fun. Yeah, that's what you the, want. I, don't... I know you, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, while they're having sex. Yeah, like... yeah. and Jim Carrey's <laughs> there. And... <laughs> Joy Gazzam! The Riddler, yeah, Jim the Carrey's Riddler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Segway King. <laughs> oh. um, tell me about the end. Tell me about the the guy who stabbed him. Because for, for half a second, I, I had a funny thought that involved the Riddler. Um, and I'll tell you about it now. Well, uh, yeah, so, <laughs> great segue. Great segue. So that guy, so spoiler alert, though we've already talked about this, um, that guy who stabs him at the end, um, I clocked him the first time he appeared on camera in, in one of the prison scenes. Yeah, early on. Because he popped up in one or two of like the wide shots of the prisoners. And in the first one that he was in, he was just in the right amount of shadow and it was, had like this toothy smile, and it was just like, oh, who the fuck is that guy? And in my head, I thought, oh, that's, that must be the Joker. That's cool. Like, that must be like a little shout out to the Joker. And then I was like, oh, no, I'm watching the Joker movie. <laughs> like, I forgot what I was watching for a second. So I was like, oh, no, it's not the Joker. Who, who could it be then? It's got to, maybe it's supposed to be the Riddler. That's cool. I didn't think he would like end up playing a part later. I was just like, that's a yeah, little yeah. Easter egg they put back there, that guy. Um, yeah, yeah. So then I just kind of forgot about him, but then he pops up again. I'm like, oh yeah, they're probably trying to make it look like he's the Riddler. And then when he approached him at the end, uh, and he's like, want to hear a joke? And I was like, oh, it is the Riddler. <laughs> you know, like I'm just like really hanging on to that. Um, and it wasn't until we got home and I think we watched something on YouTube or somebody where they were like, oh no, that's that's the real Joker, uh, who like 
is now going to be the Joker if that was to continue. Um, yeah. And I love that. I love that. I think that's brilliant. And I w- like. I wish that... The funny thing about this movie and the way it ended, it makes me like the first one more. Like, now I want to go rewatch the first one and appreciate it with this new information because now I don't need to feel like this is the shittiest Joker ever, this weak, sissy uh, victim, which was my main complaint from the first one, because now it's not him. This is just some yes. guy who... That's kind of well, awesome. That, yes, well, that's what, I, that's what made me love... The, the 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 story of the of the character seeing that 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 ending I was like, it really puts everything in, in perspective because uh, and and it, it makes the the title really really clicked for me at that point in time it's not the joker it's joker mm-hmm. this is the birth of of the of the uh, moniker mm-hmm. you know this is the birth of the idea this is not the joke. This is not the person. Yeah. All this shit to your, what you said earlier, like it all just happened to him. It like happened to him. And he fell in love with the praise. He felt he wanted to be loved and appreciated. He was noticed. He was seen. That's, that was his story. And he kind of just let it wash over him and take him to places he didn't really even want to go. And him admitting that being like, I'm just a man, guys. I'm not the joker. But he birthed the idea. Yeah, he inspired for someone the else. actual Joker. The actual Joker to go. Oh no, no, that that's for me. I Thank want you. that. Yeah, I want that. Yeah, I'm gonna take this, awesome. and I'm I'm now. That is such a, a a unique perspective to telling an origin story. That's what I was talking about earlier yes. too, where I feel like this should have just been the movie. Yeah, the yeah, first yeah, movie. yeah, yeah. Have him die in the first one, and that the birth of the Joker has now come. Yeah. Well, and that's what makes it even another layer of fascinating to me is, was this always the idea? Because I, I kind of feel like it couldn't have been. Like, because there's no guarantee that that first one was going to be that level of success. If anything, smart money might have been that it wasn't, it wouldn't have been nearly that successful because it's rated R, it's dark, it's, it's, you know, it's so adult and mature that like, would you, and it does sort of like, was this intended to be this two part where you're, it's almost like the switcheroo. Where you like yeah. pull this great, I mean, because if so, if it, it was intentional and always viewed as this this uh, this pairing, and the sequel was gonna totally flip what everyone loves about this one, then it's brilliant, and it's one of the more brilliant accomplishments yeah. uh, in, in in recent memory in terms of film. The problem being, this film is still not good. But I mean, <laughs> besides that, yes. like. That effort is incredible if it was intentional. And if it wasn't, that's almost even more interesting that yeah. you wrote this movie and you're like, this is cool because it's like a throwback to Taxi Driver and, and you know, these, these films that I liked about the anti-hero and a guy, you know, a guy, a guy from the gutter getting his shine. Um, and then it's so successful, but it's successful in a way that you don't like. And you're like, oh, I don't like that these fuckers have like taken this and made it their thing. And that's not what he's not, you know, that's not what I wanted people's takeaway to be. So now I'm going to do this. Like, yeah, I'm gonna... either way, it's, it's really, it's pretty uh, amazing. I, I, I've, I, would, I think that they might have had this, you need two scenes <laughs> for, for these movies to be combined. You need the scene where he admits that it's not him, and then you need the scene where he gets killed. I, I think they might have had that, just that idea, and they don't execute it. They, they, you know, they, it's like, the first iterations of the film, like, wouldn't it be crazy if this is how the movie ends? Mm. And they go, no, 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 we can't, like, kill it. We're not going to do that. And then they have the opportunity to do it, and yeah. then they sort of build the rest around it. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. If I had to bet. That's... No, I think that's fair. And that would make sense as to, like, that speaks directly to the shortcomings of this film. That the vast majority of it is a slog that doesn't really have any yeah. uh, clear story or progression. It's just, like recapping what happened already in a kind of boring way and then I, I think i saw i think we watched a video after we saw it somebody talking about the idea that you could you it almost makes you think that that's where the musical idea came in it was like well, we got to fill time <laughs> like what if yeah. that's a way to make it entertaining and fill time is we you know we get this amazing singer to be harley quinn and then we just kind of put in these really visually beautiful you know, musical numbers yeah. that can also substitute as dream sequences where there can be a little bit of violence. Uh, 
and then that can make it a real movie. It just did. It just didn't do that. But yeah. Either way, it comes back to just like it's it's an incredible attempt. How much of this film do you believe is real? That is not the in his head or not told through his own lens, glorified in, in some way. Wh what percentage? I don't know how you want to categorize it. I thought this... But that's a part of this, right? Is that is that not a big part of this film in well, general? I, mean, or I no? think there's the overt stuff, obviously, like the stuff where he's clearly dreaming in, this, in the musical numbers um, and that sort of thing. I think really any musical number that's not just one person singing by themselves <laughs> quietly in a cell uh, is is an imagined thing. I feel like more of this one is in the real world because I kept waiting to see did other people interact with Lady Gaga? You know, and at first they didn't really. And I was like, oh yeah, she's clearly gonna be a figment of his imagination. But then like they started, oh no, she's out there. She's giving interviews. She's talking to people. She's confronting people. It seems, it seems like she was real for most of the part, uh, most of it. You know, I obviously as they're like, as she burns down the Arkham and they flee out into the rain and they're dancing. I don't think they're dancing. You know, like I didn't think. Right, but you think they're out there. I, I thought so. I thought that I thought so because, you know, they do kick her out. I guess though her whole story is another underbaked aspect of this that I think was uh, disappointing. Where it's just like, oh, you introduce this character who lies and just snuck her way in there and lied her way in there, and then her arc is very non-existent. But that's not what you're asking about. Sorry. Um, I would have liked more of that. So I think the majority of it was more real than the first one because I don't remember all the first one, but like he was. Imagining a lot of the stuff with his neighbor, right? With Zazie. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There was the, rela the his relationship with that woman was all yeah. imagined. If, and, if I remember correctly, I've, I only saw it the one time. Yeah. But the one thing that I thought was stupid, if I may, if it was real, was that she came into the cell with him that one time when he was in isolation and they like banged. And I was just like, and she's just like, oh, a guard let me in here. It's like, wait, what? Why? This can't be real. That's, so this is my point. I also, to me, I watched the movie and I think uh, none of it's real except for the fact that he is on trial and he dies at the end. I think none of it is real. And it, there's, there's a handful of things just like that. That was one of the things I would mention. No guard, you can't just go up to a guard when you're not even in the prison anymore. You just walk in and be like, I want to go see him? Sure, right this way. In the hole? Yeah, yeah. Wasn't he in the, and you're going to have enough time to have sex. And... That's not a thing. Yeah. Do you think they would have loose matches around a bunch of convicts? A pyro? A girl uh, who burned uh, yeah. down her parents' uh, apartment? Uh, like, and even if she lied about that and that she's not, she just checked herself in and they're really loose with her. You think that they're just having matches around? No. They're yeah. not having matches around. He killed six people. You think he, they're going to let him go to music class? Yeah. For... Good for, behavior. As a special treat, because he's a nice guy. If you watch the beginning, there's a handful of things that just like doesn't make sense outside of the music yeah. and the singing and the dancing. You think they would let him represent himself in the Joker costume? Yeah, yeah. Dress, and then the guy and the court, the, the judge keeps saying, he said multiple times, don't make this a circus. He's yeah. a f***ing clown. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Like, yeah. he's literally dressed as a clown. None of this is real, guys. Yeah, I thought that None too. None of this. When, and the, when the little person is, is, te is, is testifying, and they're, like, screaming at each other and asking questions, and the judge isn't saying anything. It's like, the judge would be putting a stop to this. Like, yeah. So, that's an interesting point. That's an interesting point. There's so many... I, I think just the idea of it happened. And, and uh... I think he imagined his relationship with Harley Quinn as well. The, the first thing I know, and again, this is what I was talking about also when it was exhausting, because I'm paying, I'm like looking for like clues, like a little, a little uh, detective, if you will. Yeah, yeah. Uh, cute. A, a little, I'm a hardy boy. Uh, <laughs> I have a raging clue. Oh, Frank, seriously, I have such a raging clue right now. Um, <laughs> the, <laughs> is the first time you, you meet Harley Quinn, they have that, there's like a tracking shot and like you see her like kind of do this and he kind of like, you know, like, oh, who's over there? And then they go past it. Then she pops out. To yeah. me, they just look, they just made eye contact. Yeah, yeah. And that's it. 
Yeah. And then the rest is he, he made, the, I want her, I'm, she's going to be the thing in my head. And it goes. And it, go, it just goes from there. No, I think none of it is real. I think the only thing that is real is that he was on trial. And then I think he uh, probably took some shot, like, uh, took some shots at the police guards. They, they fucked him up. Like, I think that was real. And then I think it was real that he said, I'm just a guy. Like, he had lost everything at that moment in the film, and, like, he was emotionally drained. And he says, I'm just a guy. That's real. And then, and then the guy kills him at the end. I don't think any of this shit's real. That's interesting. I don't want to watch this movie again, but now I kind of want to just to look at it through that lens and see how I feel about it. Yeah. That would also be cool. Like, uh, but I would say again, I wish the movie was more entertaining. Like, you can, ma- you can make it this awesome statement. And there's a lot of, like... You know, let's just give Todd Phillips all the credit in the world and say that all of these things are very intentional and, uh, you know, that, like, he's doing these m- millions of different layers here that are all working. Yeah. I give him all the credit in the world. I think that would be really cool if that was the case. Yeah. I do wish there was one moment, like, if, if, if he's my protagonist, right, I, I, I have to, I mean, I guess let me ask you this question. Do you have to root for your protagonist? Not even in this movie, in general, in any film. Like, do you have to root for your protagonist? I, I am of the notion you do. You have to find some sort of moral ground to be like, he might be a piece of shit, he might be a terrible person, he might be the worst, but I, I, yeah, I don't I want him to be, to be miserable. Semantics is where I might take issues. Like, I don't know that you have to root for your protagonist, but you have to at least, like, find relatability, like you're saying, where it's like, maybe you don't want your protagonist... Like, your protagonist can be a total piece of shit who you maybe even don't want to win, but like you, you want to, you, you need to want to watch them. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, and that's, that's maybe that's a fine line. It's like, I, that's what I felt about Arthur Fleck in the, in the first movie. Um, which is, and this one too, for that matter, where I'm just like, I, this guy can't be my protagonist because I don't want him to win and I don't want to watch him. I actively want him to fail. Remember, I think I said that. I was like, I just kept yeah. wanting Batman to swing in and like <laughs> and rip this guy in half. I'm just so tired of this guy. <laughs> but it, you know what I mean? I just wish he had a moment because I like the end where they're not together. I like the part where she was using him for the celebrity aspect of it or the ride. She loved the Joker, not him. Yeah. And that little like... And that's helping the motivating him to be like, I can die now. Like, I give up. Yeah. This is over for me. Um, I, I like that. But I just wish there was a, just a little bit of a moment where I, I wanted, you know, yeah, maybe this is so he killed six people and his mother is one of them. So it's horrible for me to say. But I just, you know, I, he had such a tough upbringing and all he wanted was to be loved or seen or whatever. And I wish he got that from Harley. I wish there was just one scene where he just like, even if it was in his mind that they were like doing something and he's like, I did it. I, I did it. And he didn't, and he didn't, that didn't happen. So I, that makes me sad. Yeah. I just want that. I just wanted that for him. Yeah. Because it really if... is just misery for that guy. And it's tough for me to watch those movies. Ultimate. It's about me, yeah. not about the film. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I wonder if, uh, if him like, confessing so to speak in the courtroom is is supposed to be that moment to some degree like him have come admitting publicly that it all is, is kind of bullshit and he's responsible like he's accepting responsibility and he did seem i would say in the scene that he gets murdered in like at peace you know prior to getting shanked like he yeah. kind of had this very thoughtful smile with that guy's he was telling him the joke and then i also think that like he's going to he has a visitor so like if you believe that there was a visitor, you can believe that that was Harley Quinn. And so that almost gives it that kind of, mm. he died, he died mm. with optimism. You know, I don't know. Yeah, no, I, that's a, that was, a, to me, that was a setup. Oh, the, so you the, think it was all just, that's all, I, I think, I that's think what they set Monique him up said to, too. to die. Like I there, think was, they there wasn't a visitor. There was not a visitor. They just, he, he, he walked well, into a setup. I'm going to choose to believe in true love. <laughs> and I do not. We're gonna build a mountain. People had issue. I, I saw a, a lot of stuff. Like Harley Quinn was the true villain in this movie, and people like really upset and 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 feel like it, it's almost inciting those people who like 
hated women from the first one to be like, well, see, is the, the girls the problem in this one? Like, they felt like it was, like, furthering that in, in some regard. Mm. I, I don't think she's the... I personally don't even think she's the villain. I don't think there is a villain of the movie. Do you have thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm thinking about that. I think that she served her purpose nicely for, for my... For my tastes, I think it's I think it it's it's cool, it's interesting that you have this not work out this love story because she just she's just like everyone else. She's just like the viewers who love the first movie. I loved you when you were that thing. I don't love you now. Yeah. I'm leaving. Like so, I yeah. could see how those kind of folks might look at her as the villain because. But that's the irony is that she's a stand-in for you guys, you idiots. Like like that's yeah. the, you know. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I liked it. I liked that part too. And I want to be clear, um, I don't think everyone who liked the first Joker is an idiot. Like, I know you liked it a lot. My wife liked it a lot. I know a lot of people liked it. Most people, in fact. Um, yeah. It's just the people who decided to make it their personality <laughs> and like their, their <laughs> life philosophy. Uh, yeah, yeah. You guys are idiots. This, this movie ruined a lot of people's Halloween costumes. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the big takeaway. Yeah. Actually, one other thing on uh, on the end that just it just popped in my head. Another thing that I uh, saw, which again I don't necessarily think or agree with or whatever, but you can see in the background the the new Joker. Let's call him when he when he stabs uh, the old Joker, <laughs> Joaquin yeah. Phoenix. Uh, he he gives himself like the 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 Glasgow smile. Is that what it's, what it's called? Like he you can kind of see him cutting his mouth. Yeah, like as after he stabbed him, he kind of did this with the knife or whatever. Yeah, he does. He's like out of focus, and you hear him laughing like yeah, the Joker yeah. or whatever. And he kind of makes the motion like he's doing it. Uh, and and some people are saying, oh, and some people are really pissed, saying that this is a, a precursor to Heath Ledger's Joker because he had that. Oh, got you. And they feel like very blasphemous that you think you would tie these two. Where are you going on the internet to like find these weird, <laughs> these weird things? I just googled. It was like it's. I I didn't go. I googled like ending explained because I was I was just curious what other people because I was like this is great. So I google end, ending <laughs> like, explained. Everyone just hates to, this. <laughs> and everyone's like we truly hate it. And the first thing I the, I saw a new rock stars. So shout out, uh, new rock stars. They the they're a video that. Uh, their guy does, and yeah. he was like, he was upset about it, he seemed. Um, you know, how dare you? Not how dare you. I'm not trying to speak for him, but it felt like there was a contingent of people that were disappointed that they made that loose connection, which I just think it's a Joker thing, not a Heath Ledger thing. Yeah, and if it was, who gives a shit? That's cool. Like, that'd be another thing <laughs> I, I think was cool. It's just like, I respect when you put in all these little details that most people won't even ever notice. You know, before yeah. they have f***ing internet. Uh, <laughs> that just like things in the background that might, that are just sort of like vague, you know? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. And, but, you know, people <laughs> people need to create content and get clicks, so. You gotta pretend to be Speaking mad about of. it. But, yeah, but that's why we don't have many followers. <laughs> because our guy, cause we're not just like f***ing pretending to be mad every day. Because it's like, just, just, just enjoy the movies, guys. Or don't, you know? <laughs> is that what it takes? I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This fucking bullshit. It's a desecration. <laughs> you might as well dig up Heath Ledger and piss on his grave. Like, put that in the thumbnail. <laughs> Content. <laughs>